Welcome to another edition of Focus on Alternatives, brought to you by ADISA, the Alternative and Direct Investment Securities Association. For more content like this, please visit adisa.org and check out the resource library. This is a podcast-only edition of Focus on Alts. I'm your host, Greg Maas. I'm joined today by Matt Delorso, Managing Director of the SCI AltaGo platform. Hey, Greg. Thanks for uh, having me on the podcast. We've both dedicated a majority of our careers to the alt industry, worked in several different facets of it. But walk us through some of the exciting trends that are happening right now. Yeah, happy to. So I got in the industry around 2009. And what we've seen is we've seen growth and proliferation of the alternative investment asset class. Uh, no, no more highlighted than in 2022. Obviously, we saw stocks and bonds both lag in performance. So the 60-40 portfolio clearly needed a change or to be updated. And so we've seen alternative investments as an asset class globally grow from about $4 trillion in value in 2010 when I first entered the industry to this past year about $15 trillion. Wow. So really fast growth, about 3x. And furthermore, that growth is projected to hit $23 trillion in 2027. You know, I've been living it as well. It's, it's fantastic that more and more investors are able to benefit from the value that alts bring to the portfolio. From the reduced volatility to the tax advantages, I'm glad to see the positive impact that alts are having. So you just walked us through things on a global scale. Let's, let's drill down to the U.S. specifically. Yeah. So you know, this research is coming from Prequin, Cerulli, and PwC. But what they're saying is that in order to hit that $24 trillion number in 2027, you would need to see growth in the retail investor allocations to alternatives. And we're seeing that demand uh, come in strong as well, too. So that projection includes 74% of those assets, those alternative assets, being in retail and high net worth individual portfolios. However, today, only about 6% of high net worth investors have any allocation to alternatives. Yet, 35% of those same investors are demanding access to alts. So what needs to happen is that advisors, you know, who are the trusted fiduciary for those investors, need to be educated. They need to have broader access to alternative investments in order to meet that demand and that projection. So. Is that all that's needed, or what is needed to meet all that growing demand? A whole lot. Um, education, uh, certainly first and foremost, on what these products are, how they can provide tax advantage, how they can decrease volatility, how they can provide diversification, how they can provide outsourced growth or outsized alpha. Uh, so education, industry events like what we're doing at Adisa, bringing the industry together to talk about what's going on and how clients and advisors can be best positioned. There's going to need to be more great fund managers, right? Managers that enter the space, not just institutional managers, but fund managers that come into the retail channel. It's going to need to be technology and tools, right, that facilitate that access, the actual purchase, making it more like trading a stock or bond, and then handling all the performance management and the post-trade life cycle of buying an alternative and managing that alternative. It really is that whole ecosystem. And there's been a lot of exciting developments. I know that uh, there's... Also, a large group of smart people working on making that all happen. So that's great that that's coming together to serve investors. In your view, why have alternative investments gained such a larger share of markets and portfolios in the last few years? Yeah, like, like we saw in 2022, you know, stocks and bonds just did not perform. Uh, they both went, went, went negative for the year. Uh, you needed to find assets that were uncorrelated. Um, certainly, you know, there's been a proliferation in, in private credit because banks aren't lending as much. You know, private organizations, private funds, private institutions can do that lending and provide investors a nice return. There's, you know, creative ways to use alternative investments for tax advantage, right? If you want to lower your tax basis or delay taxes uh, or just be tax smart, you know, alternative investments can provide that benefit. Um, and then there's just reasons for outsized growth. Uh, it's really hard to perform better than an index in the public markets. So advisors can uh, get opportunities to investors that can help them with alpha, and uh, clients are demanding that. You know, clients want to better perform, they want to save on taxes, and they want to be diversified in case you know 2022 happens again. Right, and we've been seeing more and more advisors embrace alts, use alts. Um, but what would you say to advisors that haven't gone there yet? 
Yeah, I would say that it's a, a growing area for you to differentiate your practice, attract high net worth investors, um, but do it smart. You know, use tools, use technology, be aware of compliance. Um, you know, do you know try and try and educate yourself to do what your clients are asking, um, and provide your clients with, like we said, better, more resilient portfolios with interesting strategies. But but be educated about how and why you do it. Um, so alternative investments are risky. They're not for everybody. They're not for every situation. But in those right situations, it really does make a difference. Um, helping with financial planning, helping with the entire portfolio, helping with goals-based outcomes can be aided uh, in certain situations by alternative investments, and that can really differentiate an advisor. But make sure you work with your firm. Make sure you do your proper diligence. Make sure you understand what clients are asking for or are buying or what you're recommending. 100% agree. And from my perspective, it's easier than ever to use alts. The technology platforms are more robust than ever before. The product structures um, are more varied, and there's just more options for people to choose from. Uh, would you agree that it's easier to allocate than ever before? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when we got into the business in 2010, alts were mystical. You know, they were really alternative. You know, they were not as common, certainly, as they are now. Um, access has increased. Product structures have gotten better for investor outcomes. Education has proliferated. Clearly, I mean, you're seeing the increased growth uh, that comes from all of this stuff as a result. But what I would say is that, you know, advisors um, you know, need to be, like we've mentioned, educated. They need to have these tools. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of clutter. It used to be a relationship-based industry. It still is a relationship-based industry. But really to turn it into a more transparent industry, you know, there needs to be things like research in certain segments. There needs to be diligence materials and, and insights that are scalable. There needs to be technology that provides access and that provides ease of operations of doing this business. And the industry's providing that, right? Platforms like ours at SCI Altigo are providing that. There are many groups that are doing research. There's a whole host of offerings and fund managers that want to bring these products to market. And so it gets noisy for advisors, right? And so they need to be able to, you know, get to the facts, you know, get to the information they need. They need to be able to make the right selections for clients and then educate the client on why this fits in the portfolio. And, you know, that actually gets harder when there's more participation, right, when there's more noise. So helping uh, demystify, helping declutter, and helping getting to actionable, intelligent advice is what we're trying to do with our platform as well. Right. And I think technology is going to be core to making all that happen and dealing with the noise. But alternative investments, they're not all perfect. There's definitely been some challenges, some that have underperformed, some because of mismanagement, and some just because of market cycles, which that, that's why you diversify in varied investments and varied alts. Any advice for the audience on how to try to allocate to the right ones and avoid any landmines? Certainly, you know, not everything performs the way you expect, but you need to obviously avoid or try and avoid fraud, misinformation. Um, and so, you know, doing your homework, there's no substitute for doing your own due diligence, using Great. all the information you know, that's available to you through third parties or from the fund manager or from other people who have invested previously in that fund manager and prior products can usually help because it's obviously, you know, based on trust, it's based on performance, but that information isn't always right available at your fingertips. So, so it's hard to get to the facts and get to, you know, make an allocation decision and feel good about it. That being said, you know, tools, technology, platforms like ours with that, you know, access point to various different asset classes and various different funds, performance information, diligence information available through other parties and, and third parties available at your fingertips. And then, um, you know, actually doing an investment and uh, using tools like that our technology provide around suitability, compliance, uh, making sure information has been shared, read, uh, understood by the client, um, signed off on things like, um, you know, these are illiquid, right? And if something, if there is a blip in performance, like we saw in 22, you may not be able to redeem, you know, right when you want to. There are certain windows when you can get out. So, you know, technology and tools and processes can help you know, limit the um, chance of exposure to fraud or bad actors. Um, and we have some technology tools to make sure that things are suitable and compliant, you know, through, through the firm and, and for the investor. 
Matt, thank you for walking us through that. And from, and from my perspective, it's placing lots of small bets. You don't load up on one or two stocks. You don't load up on one or two alts. You put together a thoughtful portfolio that has various asset classes, maybe a various timing of liquidity so that you can achieve or that client can achieve uh, their financial goals. So thank you for walking us through this. It's an exciting time. Uh, big takeaway there, 23 trillion by what year? 2027, so just around the corner. Exciting times in the alt space. And thank you for listening to another episode of Focus on Alternatives. Again, for more information like this, please visit adisa.org. Thank you.